G'day guys, it's Guy Tellen from Bondi Harvest here at Lansdowne Research Station to learn a little bit more about methane emissions with good meat. And I'm already pulling a crowd. We hear, is that you? It wasn't me. All right, so I've made the long trip from Bondi all the way to Townsville to talk to you about burps and farts. I'm sweating bullets, so let's get inside and meet some scientists. So we're here at James Cook University, we're in the labs and we're going to learn a little bit more about cow farts and what emissions they put into um, you know, our atmosphere. Yeah, well, a uh, guy cows don't fart, they burp. They burp. Okay, so all right. They so do a little bit of farting, yeah. but a lot more burping. So how much sort of methane emissions all up to, I suppose, Australian cattle yeah. release into the air? Australian cattle account for about 9 or 10 percent of all greenhouse gases yeah, well. in Australia. Yeah, okay, that's, that's quite a lot. It is a lot. How do you go about measuring that methane? Yeah, like, so we... I mean, do you chase them around with paper bags or, like, what's the deal? No, we, we don't <laughs> chase them around the paddock. What okay. we do is we, uh, we, we corner them in a, in a part of the paddock where we can then measure the methane that's coming off them using lasers. Laser beams? <laughs> Not quite like okay, Star Wars. Alright, so you're the laser man. You're basically the Luke Skywalker of this whole operation. And what's going on? You've got the sword, you've got I've, the... Uh... I've got the lasers, that's yeah, right, guys. What, so. what, what is going on here? I mean, it doesn't look like a lightsaber to me. So we are measuring a methane plume that's coming off these animals through that detector at the top there with the yep, mirror. Yep. And that's able to detect the methane emissions from these animals. So why is it so important to you know, measure these, these methane levels around Australia? For the industry, it's important to measure it because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And if you can manage it, you can start sequestering carbon or reducing your emissions. So some of the work we're doing here is looking at different things we can feed the, the cattle. And yep. one that, uh, that the team here has come across is, is feeding algae, yep. so seaweeds and yep. that type of thing. Because uh, they have some neat uh, characteristics that seem to really knock down the amount of methane that's produced. Where do you actually grow and how do you grow the algae? You'll see Rocky has got a whole bunch of tanks at the university here. So There's like, different it's, types it's of like algae. It's like my fish tank at home that I don't look Yeah, after. it's a bit bigger. It's a okay. bit bigger. Yeah. Where did the, the lightning bolt, the idea, come from to use algae? When people were looking for novel ideas to mitigate methane, yep. you know, we thought, well, why not try algae? Yep. And, and target the algae that we understand have really unique chemistry and see if that chemistry interacts with the microbes in the rumen to see if it'll change how methane's produced in a cow. Okay, well, wow. and um, you know, how did you come about the right sort of algae for the right reasons? Uh, is we, it that sort of trial and error? It is a bit of trial and error, yeah. but we might choose five or six, and then yeah. we do an experiment called the Thunderdome. Okay, that sounds fun. They all go in one <laughs> tank together, yeah. but only one comes out. It's like the Hunger Games of algae. It is, of, um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the Hunger Games of algae, of algae. It's very, very much so. <laughs> only one survives. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and, and that's the one you want to take, and then we'll start yeah. to produce it at scale. So CSIRO can start to yeah. do their trials with animals. So how many of these algae that we use for lowering methane are actually edible? How much could I cook with or use in recipes? Oh look, they're fan algae are remarkably versatile. So yeah. you can use these in a different range of dishes. And they're all edible? Like they're, they're all edible. Yeah, wow. you'll, you'll feel fantastic. Let's get some sea lettuce and I might eat some. Can't go wrong. <laughs> So I suppose there's only so much information you can get from creating a little cow in a glass jar. I mean, yeah. it sort of comes yeah. down to no, it. You, you, it's really how you integrate the information from the lab scale right yeah. out to the field scale. And then you can use the information to sort of validate what we're doing. So where does, where does Australia sit in the world stage in regards to carbon emissions and what we're trying to do to lower them? Over the last 30 years, the Australian cattle industry has reduced the intensity of emissions. That's the amount of methane produced per kilo of, of beef yep. by, by about 14%. So what's the end goal? Well, the goal here is, is really to uh, make Australian cattle production carbon neutral. Yeah. You know, we know there's, there's a potential that's re realistic, but we've got to be able to measure the emissions to be able to say whether a property is carbon neutral or not. So this yeah. is really about understanding what those emissions really are so we can prove that, uh, that beef production is, uh, is carbon friendly. Awesome, well, thank you. All right, cow extras are done. You guys are epic. Good work, dinner's on me. All right guys, you know what to do. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on a new video every single week. If you want to see what I did with the awesome algae and seaweed, click over here. And you know what to do. If you've got any questions or queries, leave comments below so we can get back to you so you got all the information. I'm going to cook some dinner, try and catch some methane. We'll see you in a sec. Eww. Hey. <laughs>